Okay, so what we're going to talk about are things right now called the critical points. Okay, and so what you want to make sure you get down is I want to write down what are critical points. That's sort of like our question that we're asking the other side to answer. All right. Um, I'm going to probably want to write down, I mean, stuff to say what it's not important. So, I'd probably say right now. I'm just trying to make it that easy, but if you can find this week to abbreviate words like between you got to be easy to send me in, or if um, you want to put like, instead of increasing and decreasing, you put like up there and down there, that's fine as well. All right. The critical point is the stuff written in the black is kind of like um, what you would hear if you were thinking calculus. Um, the critical points are points at which a line drawn tangent to the curve is horizontal or vertical. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and there are points where a function changes its increasing or decreasing behavior. So if you're looking at a function and you can find where it changes from increasing to decreasing, then you found the critical point. Alright? And there are two types of critical points. There are maximums and minimums, which are, I mean, I think you guys know if I say the maximum or the minimum. You kind of have a general idea of what that might be. Right? So there are two types of maximums and minimums. Relative and absolute. Okay? Again, we will explain what each of those are. And then you also have points of inflection where the graph changes shape but does not change its increasing or decreasing behavior. That means, so a point of inflection happens when a graph sort of change the way it looks, but it's still keeping the decreases still increasing. All right. So the picture that I have drawn here, not part of this thing on no, the next page is not easy. Right. So that picture right there, you don't need to necessarily worry about drawing it. You're about to get a bigger picture with more clearly labeled by like, um, maximums and minimums. So what you can see, what I want you guys to sort of understand is this is like this. This is a very large concept, like a conceptual idea that you need to have for calculus. Is that critical points occur when there is what we call a horizontal tangent. Now we all know what tangent means. Nope. <laughs> Tangent, yes, it's a view of triangle, they find the tangent of an angle, but tangent means it touches at one point. Like so this line is this line is tangent to this point right here, because all it goes, all it does is it comes from out here, and then it just touches at that point. Only at that point. And this line is tangent. Because again, it only touches at that point. Okay? So critical points occur when the horizontal tangent is zero. Right? So if I call it, when there is a horizontal, I'll get him up to the main Okay? Now, what we want to make sure we distinguish between is what is a absolute maximum and minimum or absolute maximum and minimum or a relative maximum and minimum. Okay? So Just like two more writing seconds. Anyone have any idea of what uh, a absolute maximum or an absolute minimum might be? Anyone know what that word absolute means? Yes, yes, yes. Do you guys think that this would be an absolute maximum? No. Why not? Because they were going further. So this would be a relative maximum because I could find a point higher on this graph somewhere 
larger water value. Unless this is just the absolute or relative minimum. Mm -hmm. Relative because I was going down from Everest to Alaska and back. Mm -hmm. Where you turn it upside down, or you just bring it to the vegetable to the origin. Okay. 
not that. That's even or odd function. I'm talking about is the degree of this function even or is the degree odd? Is the highest exponent going to be even or odd? If you look at your notes, you have a table that tells you. I don't think so. What's it? All going down. Not just because it's going down, but because the end behavior on the left and the end behavior on the right are both going down. They're going the same direction. So it's an even function. So what we know is that this would be an even function with a negative leading coefficient because the end behaviors are both going to be negative infinity. This, on the other hand, would be an even function with a positive leading coefficient because the end behavior on the left and the end behavior on the right are both going towards positive infinity. Okay? And then we can jump back over to here and we would know that this would be an odd degree function because the end behaviors are going in different directions. And we know that this would be a positive leading coefficient because we know that a positive leading coefficient would cause this graph to have a negative left end behavior and a right end behavior of odd degree. Memorize that table. I do you have it in your notes. You need to memorize that. Right? So, the idea of relative and absolute minimums and maximums, that makes sense. Alright? So again, another way to tell it. Where is, where is the maximum minimum occur? It occurs when the graph changes from increasing to decreasing, or decreasing to increasing. So there is a maximum right here, you can go from increasing to decreasing. There's a minimum here. Alright, this is a relative minimum. Because it goes from decreasing to increasing. And then again, in this case, it's an absolute maximum, it goes from increasing to decreasing. Right. So, I think we should back. So, I want you guys to do we're estimating here. Okay, not finding an exact method. This function right here. This function right here, take, say, 30 seconds. And I want you to see if you can figure out, and I want you to write down what x values you think the maximum and minimum occur at, and if it's a relative or absolute maximum or minimum. I want you to sketch the graph. And then write it down. Counting by ones on the uh, x and y axis. I need someone to come up here in Washington Blue Marker. I want you to draw actually do this. I want you to place a flower where there is a where there is a minimum on this graph. I'm placing the flower where there is a minimum. That's the minimum. Everyone agree? Yeah. 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 All right. I need someone to come up here and put a smiley face where a maximum would be. All right. Everyone agree that would be a maximum. Okay. So. What I'm going to do right now is I'm, I, I'm just going to be off of the graph a little bit so you can see. Alright? So, let's 
talk about the smiley face first, which represents a maximum. All right. So smiley face. Um, this smiley face represents. Uh, Remember, there's a maximum. What type of maximum is it? Is it absolute or a relative? Okay. Why is it a relative, Lonnie? Okay, so you can always find the higher y value. Here's one right here. Alright? So this is a relative maximum. Alright. Um, Estimate what x value that would be. Yeah. Point five. So we'll say as everything we estimate will be either like one point zero or one point. It'll always be like point five. Uh, so yes, x equals. Uh, we'll say now you can't just point five. The name is zero point five. Okay. Good. Um, all right, so let's talk about the yeah, smiley face. So that is my big power power. All right. All right. So, um, flowers in this case represent a minimum. Is this a relative or absolute minimum? Relative. And how do we know that, uh, Leanna? So because the function says the function is still going down, so we can always find the lower lower y value. This is a again a relative minimum, and um, Lucas is going to guess what x value that is. Which one would it be? One. That would be one. Okay. So that's pretty easy. See this part that says support answers numerically? I don't really care if you do that. Okay. Um, if you can, what I want you to go do, one, be able to look at the graph and figure it out and like make the next Two, uh, and this is second, you need to have your calculator up, so make sure you have to find these things on your calculator. Make sure you have your calculator down. But before we do that, we have another graph that we're looking at. All right, Jalen, come up here and show me when a rainbow. I want you to put a dot where there are a where there is a maximum. Good. You're going to put two maximums. Everyone agree with those being the only maximum? Alright. And start. Uh, who wants to go up put? Who wants Rodrigo to go up? Alright. So, Lucas wants Rodrigo to go up here. So, Rodrigo, I need you to start. No. So, I'm on Ronaldo. I'm like providing Ronaldo and his last name. No, that's not the only thing. And I want to get that the only minimum. Okay. So, what we want here is we have two of Dylan's rainbows. It looks like a rainbow. So, no. That's the way rainbow. So we we'll call this rainbow one, rainbow two. This one would be, this would be rainbow one right here. That'd be rainbow two. We don't know which rainbow is better. All right, rainbow one represents what? Uh, absolute maximum. Why is it an absolute maximum? Okay. Absolute maximum. Um, and can we uh, take an estimate on what that x value might be? One. We'll say one. It might be a little bit 
We can kind of see this doing something right here right now. But let's go ahead. Obviously we need to, we need to see a little bit more. So we don't need to see more up here. So there's gonna be that there. Let's hit zoom, not zoom, let's hit window. Um let's go to uh the Y minimum. Let's make let's just make that uh, make it 30, why not? Make it more space. And make this uh keep that 10. And let's change the Y scale since that's a large distance. Let's just change it to five. Everyone with me? Congrats. Okay. So now we have this. So first of all, let's take seven of these and just spend some. So this is our graph. Alright? Now, we're looking at this. Uh, well, we can see that it's like somewhere right here. This, this would be what? Is this, what is this? The relative minimum is going to be one of the maximum. Now, that would involve me being a really good estimator to figure out what that actually is. So, what we're going to do is this first. We'll go in here and we're going to just put a dot here. Okay, so those are, those are our points we're trying to do. So, here's how you find this on your calculator. You want to know how to do it. You definitely need to know how to do this. You to make your life easy. Alright? Anytime you want to figure something out about your graph, you're going to hit second, trace. Okay? Now, there's all kinds of things here. Right now, we, we are going to figure out, we're going to figure out a minimum or a maximum first. Huh? Minimum? Okay. So, minimum, obviously, this might be what we want to do, right? Minimum. We're going to hit trace. So, it's going to say something. It's going to say less sound. So there's a couple ways to do it. One, you can do something that takes too much time. Or two, you can look at where do you think this minimum is. So this minimum looks like it's like somewhere around one, negative one or negative two, right? So I'm going to choose a number that is to the left of negative one or negative two. So if I just do that, like what what you can give me a number that's to the left of negative two. Uh, negative five. Negative three or negative four, whatever. So you can just type in negative. Three. And hit enter. Okay? And you'll see like it jumps up and just like a little extra the curve thing. So now it says right bound. So someone give me a number that is to the right of let's say negative one. Zero. Okay? So you can hit zero and no Now it says guess. So the calculator is gonna guess, aka it's gonna get it right. Hit enter. And it tells you that your minimum is that x equals negative 1.759574 two more stuff. And that the minimum y value is negative 22.8137. So the question says state that x value is where they occur. So the minimum occurs at x equals negative 1.7. I think it says this project is near 100, so it's being 1.76. Does that make sense? Now, we come over here. You want to find a maximum. That means you want to find something out about this graph. Whenever you want to find something out about a graph, you do what? Second trace. Uh, I think that we might click the one that says maximum. Okay, maybe. We're going to hit that. It says the next time again. Now, this maximum is it looks like it's right between 0 and 1. So, I'm just going to pick 0 is my left down because that's the left of that. And then I'm going to pick, uh, let's say, we'll just be saying to pick 2. So, we'll pick 2 for my right down. Hit yes. Oh, there you go. There's my middle. I found that one So, x is equal to 0.4. Actually, X equals two. Point four three. Okay. 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 Okay.
Was that pretty simple to do that on your calculator? Besides, besides uh, uh, Nicholas over here, because he's uh, apparently breaking calculators. <laughs> All right. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, I have two more problems. I want you guys to find the maximum and minimum score on your own using the calculator. All right. And then you have these down here. So I want you guys to do these two problems right here on your own in your in your uh, notes. And I want you to find the maximum and minimum. How many of you guys approximately say five minutes? What are the problems with this too? Well, I would always start by hitting the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Grab something, always start by hitting room six.
So what we're going to talk about, and this is uh, this is again big in calculus, all right, is average rate of change. Now you guys know how to find slope, all right? The slope between any two points on the graph of a linear function represents a constant rate of change. So a linear function is a straight line, all right? So the straight line represents that it's changing at a constant speed, okay? However, since we are getting a little bit smarter and a little bit more advanced, we don't want to just have to find the slope of linear functions. All right. So we're, I mean, right now we are. So I mean, even at the end of this year, you guys still won't be able to find the slope of a curve um, exactly. Next year, though, on the other hand, you will be able. To. But for nonlinear functions, meaning anything that's a curve. The slope changes between different pairs of points. So we, what we can do is we can only talk about the average rate of change between any two points. So we're not going to be talking about slope per se, but we're going to be talking about average rate of change. However, we calculate it just about the same way. All right? So. This T concept box, this is uh this is in your book. Okay. So it says the average rate of change between any two points on the graph of F is the slope of the line through those points. Okay? So Oh, no. That was the Okay. So what I want you guys to understand is this, all right? Verbally, it says the average rate of change between any two points on the graph of F is the slope of the line between or through those points. Okay. Geometrically, what do you think? Gotcha. Okay, we're back. Okay. So, what we're doing here, okay, so geometrically, like visually, what we're seeing here is this. We have a curve, all right? And what we want to do is we want to be able to figure out the average rate of change between x1 and x2. Okay? So, what we're going to do to find that average rate of change is we're going to find the slope of a linear line that passes through both those points, which we call a secant line. Okay? The slope of the secant line is just represented by n. Alright? So, symbolically, okay, this is how you're going to calculate it. Okay? Is this right here. What it says is the slope of the secant line. Alright? Right? Okay, you don't even write all this. This is all like in books. Yeah. Yeah. So first of all, guys, the slope of the secant line, it is this is also going to be our average rate of change. Okay. Now the way we find this is in case you can't see that it is f of x2 minus f of x1 divided by x2 minus x1. Okay, f of x2 is just a fancy word for what is a just a fancy way of saying y2. f of x1 is just a fancy way of saying y1. It is literally slope. y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. You've all heard. Of Okay, so if we can find the slope of our secant line, this is this. We found the average rate of change. Okay, so what we want to do is we're going to look at the thing to show how this applies to real world situations. <laughs> Where? Don't 
Other than same positive, then f of x is increasing. Over the interval. Okay. If average rate of change is decreasing, not decreasing, negative, then Effect is decreasing over the interval. Okay. That should make sense. If, if the slope of the line is negative, that means you're going downhill. So that means the function will be. So the line is positive, that means the function is increasing. Alright. Now, the final thing that I want to do is just one last problem where you find the average rate of change, minus the word problem. Okay? I want to see how this thing now relates to real life. You do not need to write down the word problem. Yes, uh, I love it. Um, you all got the written down? Okay. 
Then, I need to do 1.25. So now I'm going to hit on the bed of 1.25. Store that in there. So now x is 1.25. I replaced it. So I have to go negative 16x squared. Oh, uh, because I don't want to see this. It's 1 for the x plus 4. So enter. 16.5. What do you mean with that? It will always be that until you score it here or something else. Okay, so what is the reason to score that? Nothing. Yeah. And just what? You got to score that. You don't want it blank. It doesn't affect, it does not affect the bypass that come here, then I'll take that. It doesn't affect that. It's only out here in the column. So, minus 16.5. Divided by 1.75 minus 1.25 is 0.5. So I take this and we go 7.5 minus 16.5. Hit enter. And then divide that by 0.5. I'm getting negative 18. So my average rate of speed is negative 18. And it is negative 18 uh, feet per second. Feet per second. Okay. So, it does ask us to do, okay, we found the average speed. What does this represent though? Like, what does this mean that is negative 18 feet per second? Well, this is, we're describing the height. So is the height, is this ball getting closer to the ground or is it getting further away from the ground? It's getting closer. It's getting closer because it's decreasing. The height is decreasing, so therefore it's going close to the ground. Yeah, but at some point in time, you know, 1.25, 1.75, maybe it's still going up. So, yeah, see, I just broke your hypothesis. Boom! <laughs> yeah, bro. Alright, so that is the last. So, 